of the fast roads. And um, it's quite, um, you have to guess your way through these plantations here because there's no actual roads in there. And then uh, it's quite rough in some places as well. But otherwise, so far it's going right. You've just got to keep it together here. For overnight leaders, Enzo Kuhn and Guy Hodgson, special stage nine produced problems. The pair were battling with suspension and steering problems and near the end of the stage broke a side shaft. That cost them over a minute and dropped the Daewoo Lanos to fourth place. Rally leaders Paolo Piazzamuzo and Nick Haddon were having a clean run in the Sassol Ford Escort, but were to drop 15 seconds to a flying Damso and Bonafide. On the long straights through the flat millie fields, the Class A8 cars were hitting speeds of around 200 kilometers an hour. With the high winds, dust wasn't a major problem for crews, but there were often unexpected dangers to be experienced on the rough road surfaces. That major bump there temporarily threw Piazza Muzo out of his rhythm with the impact cracking the Sassel Ford Escort's windscreen. There was no further damage, but Piazza Muzo and Haddon also dropped five seconds to Jan Habak and Douglas Judd, who were in third place behind the Sassel Ford Escort and the Castrol Toyota of Serge Damso and Vito Bonafide. The champions were pushing as hard as ever with their first priority to get ahead of Damso and Bonafide. Like Enzo Kuhn and Guy Hodgson, the Castrol Toyota pair were out in a new car, with Damso still exploring the limits. With the pace of the rally stepping up a notch or two in the millie fields, Damso and Bonafide were gradually starting to close in on Piazza Muzo and Haddon. Stage 9 was not without its problems for the six-time champions. The throttle cable on the Toyota Conquest stuck wide open, but Damso and Bonafide still managed to win the special stage by 10 seconds from Habak and Judd. You won't find this method of steering wheel repair in any debut service manual, with Enzo Kun now in a philosophical frame of mind. I think we'll just treat this day as a, as a development run, you know, we've, we've had a problem, the suspension moving in the first stage and then um, we've had uh, just a side shelf break now also because, probably because of the suspension flex, you know, so it's just all part of things we, you need to find when you test, so it's frustrating because I'd like to um, stay in the front but I suppose I'll have to forget about that. The huge marshalling yards at Centraran provided a backdrop for Special Stage 11, with Chart van der Valt and the petite Cindy Harding now up to fifth in the GNT Technologies VW Golf and firmly in control of Class A7 after the overnight withdrawal of Barry Hobbler and Mike Burrows. Overall championship runners up three times in five years, Van der Valt and Harding are probably the most consistent team currently operating in South Africa and were lying third in the championship going into the Stanek Fleet Management Rally. Van der Valt and Harding were being chased by Class A6 leaders Hergen Fecken and Dave Lukovic, with young Fecken again showing the form that makes him one of the brightest young stars of the future in South African rally. Jean-Pierre Damso and Pierre Aris were still going along steadily in the team total Toyota Conquest, but were continuing to lose ground to the flying Dunair Toyota Conquest. The younger Damso and Aris were also being caught by Ben and Isabel van der Vestesen, who were making the most of local knowledge. They were in control of Class S20, although the category does not count towards national championship scoring. N runners often found the going tough in the thick sand, but Hannes Krobler and Dave McGregor were continuing to dominate the standard car category. The pair were in a solid eighth place overall and gradually building up a substantial lead over Cliff Blackman and Johan Klaassen, who were on the fringes of the top ten in the team total Nissan Sentra. The consistent Craig Trott and Brian Duncan were also on the fringes of the top ten in the team total Toyota Conquest, running in Class A6, with Bossy Bossman and Steve Krobola having a good run in an ageing Nissan that was running second to the Van der Vestesens in Class S20. Also moving up the field were Skulk Berger and Thiele van Festenhagen in the Godrich Toyota Conquest, with the pair taking over the lead in Class N2 from Dean Saunders and Graham Hooper, who had run into problems. Problems too for Yanni Havoc and Doug Judd in the factory VW Golf. We're quite happy with our performance up until the last stage, but we get a bit of a niggling problem with the fuel pumps, and we've now discovered that there's a it was a loose earth wire. But obviously, we found that out only when we were in the stage, so we lost about a minute and a half. The last five dirt special stages on leg two of the second day of the Stanek Fleet Management Rally were run in an area bordered by the N12 to Witbank and Nigel and were loaded with more drama. Enzo Kuhn and Guy Hodgson were first on the road but fourth overall in a Daewoo Lanus that was holding together despite the series of mechanical niggles that had hampered them throughout the day. 
Cecil Ford Escort crew Paolo Piazzamuzo and Nick Haddon were now second to Serge Damso and Vito Bonafide, with only seconds separating the two crews. Jan Havoc and Douglas Judd were down in third place, but still pushing hard, while behind them, rally and championship leaders Serge Damso and Vito Bonafide were looking to take control, despite cracking the oil sump on Special Stage 13. Then, it all started to fall apart for the Castrol Toyota pair when they hit a cow at speed in Special Stage 14. Further back, Class N2 frontrunners Dean Saunders and Graham Hooper were battling with suspension problems after hitting a railway line at high speed. That threw matters out of kilter for the Natalians, who were gradually dropping down the field. By contrast, off-road champion Cliff Barker and Hein Latachan were making up places in the big Pennzoil Land Rover, which had not missed a beat. This was the maiden outing for the Land Rover with its new BMW M3 motor and proved to be very satisfying for Barker. And while he and Latachan were merrily trucking on, there was frantic activity in the Castrol Toyota team at the service area at the end of stage 14. Yeah, the, unfortunately, uh, towards the end of the stage, there were some cows going across the road. In the stage? In the stage, and um, and uh, we saw the first one go across, and the next one just popped out at the bush there, and we just hit it flat out. The unfortunate Damso and Bonafide were forced to take a lateness penalty while repairs were carried out, and that put Paolo Piazzamuzo and Nick Haddon back into the lead. It also moved Jan Havoc and Doug Judd up to second place, and when the Castrol Toyota finally expired on special stage 16 with loss of oil pressure, the reigning champions were assured of moving into the lead in this year's championship if they made it to the finish. Hergen Fecken and Dave Lukovitz also moved up a slot in the Dunair Toyota Conquest and were now fourth and leading class A6. Behind them, Ben and Isabel van der Westhuizen had Class S20 in the bag and were now fifth in a tremendous performance and starting to put pressure on Fekken and Lukovic. There was also a tale of woe for Chart van der Volt and Cindy Harding. Broken side shafts in successive stages dropped them into the 20s and they'd lost the Class A7 lead to John Bruin and Terry Porter in an Opel Cadet Superboss. Hannah Schrober and Dave McGregor were now around four minutes clear of Cliff Blackman and Johan Klaassen in the Group N category, with another top ten finish on the cards for the Bridgestone Nissan Sentra crew. Skulk Berger and Thilo van Festenhagen in the Godrich Toyota Conquest were well clear of Dean Saunders and Graham Hooper in Class N2, and down in Class N1, Pretoria crew Rodney Fasaki and Chris Olsen had taken over the lead after the Nissan Sentra in the hands of Wiley Harrington and Neil Faree succumbed to an engine problem. Back at the Expo Centre at Nasrec, two novel special stages were set up to wrap up the Stanek Fleet Management Rally. The first of these was a super special stage, with two cars competing against each other on a mirror image course. To make life a little more interesting, the stage was run in reverse order, with the slower cars going out ahead of the quicker vehicles, which gave many of the normally anonymous older S20 entries their opportunity to shine. It all made for some highly interesting motoring, with some desperately close battles taking place. Once again, the slippery surface placed a premium on car control. The crowd that packed the spectator areas loved every minute of it, with the super special stage another innovation that made the Stanek Fleet Management Rally an event that was just a little out of the ordinary. When the quicker cars started to appear on the course, some highly interesting little private battles started to emerge. Class A6 frontrunners Hergen Fecken and Dave Lukovic were stacked up against rivals Jean-Pierre Damso and Pierre Aris, with the Dunair crew only three seconds away from setting the fastest time of the day. With a lead of nearly two minutes, Paolo Piazzamuzo and Nick Haddon had victory all wrapped up, but made a bit of a hash of the Super Special and dropped 18 seconds. The last act of the rally moved indoors to Hall 5 with a dash for cash special stage with a prize of a thousand rand to the winners of each class. This produced some terrific performances with the big Barker Latahan Penzoil Land Rover and the problem McGregor Bridgestone Nissan Sentra star attraction. Ben and Isabel van der Westhuizen were also among the class winners, as were Chart van der Vold and Cindy Harding, who hung on to maintain a 100% finish record this season, albeit with a 23rd place overall in this event. Fastest time of the day went to the factory VW pair of Jan Habak and Doug Judd, who also had the satisfaction of moving to the top of this year's championship. A comfortable first victory of the season for Paolo Piazzamuzo and Nick Hatton, and a creditable third first time out for Enzo Kuhn and Guy Hodgson. Good performances too from Fekin and Lukovic, the fan of Estesens, and Hannes Krobler and Dave McGregor, who moved back into the lead in the Group N Championship. An unexpected Class A7 win for Bruin and Porter in the Opel Cadet, but an overall victory was a massive boost for the Sassel Ford team. Well, I'm delighted for Sassel Ford, the team, 
We uh, really had a slump in the middle of the year. Come back like this, we're really happy. A traditional bubbly for Piazza Muzo and Hatton, with celebrations for the more senior Group N winners, Hobbler and McGregor, taking on a slightly more subdued look. For more information, visit the website at www.stanagram.com.